Welcome to the Christmas Inn. Day seven? That sounds right. I'm a mean one. Mrs. Hagen. I was thinking about that, that you should get someone to like redo it the lyrics for day one. We watched The Grinch It's Still Christmas. One of my favorite Christmas uh, specials. Now you'd actually, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? You'd actually seen this before, right? Yes. Right. Well, I've... And I had seen the film version many years ago in the cinema. I've heard the film version. So bad, I, uh, it's not I, I canon. Able, I was able to point out the continuity differences between this one and the film version. Well, let's take this one as canon because, quite honestly, well, yeah, the film version is bad. Well, yeah, all of the animated Doctor Seuss specials are really good. Like compare the Lorax, the actual animated special, to the Lorax, the CGI bullshit. So. Yeah. Which I think was about Dr. why you should buy a Prius or something? I don't know. The only Dr. Seuss film that's any good is 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T. Yeah, but that wasn't... That was a that, proper Dr. Seuss film. Yeah, yeah, that was like good. Yeah. Like for the day, for the time. Everyone else, all the ones are like adaptations of this stuff. 5,000 Fingers was Dr. Seuss yeah. doing his thing on the film. Like, my, I think my favorite Dr. Seuss book is gotta be um, the cat in the hat comes back and they accidentally turn the snow pink and they have to clean it up because like what will our parents say if the snow is pink and I'm like that always struck me as a child I'm like why would you get in trouble with your parents for the snow being pink like I never you know is it was it a thing like oh no you broke nature now it's broken forever who were the ones who broke the snow I was these two but I don't like the, it was Jim Carrey again, wasn't he the cat? Uh, no, that was Mike Myers. Oh. One of that was recognized as even worse than yeah. the Grinch live action film. Although apparently the Grinch live action film has developed a little bit of a following since it was lambasted rightly lambasted. in the cinema. Lambasted, when it lambasted first came right out. in the balls. But, pe but apparently a generation of kids have grown up with it and think it's great. No accounting for taste. No. But this was the classic, the, the animated version. And like. It never struck me before, maybe I'm a better critical thinker now, and I was like, why are the Who celebrating Christmas? Do they have, are they Christian? Like, do they have a church? Like, who's the Who Jesus? Or is there like, is Jesus a different race? Because you know how in, in Dr. Dr. Seuss there's like, people of all different races, but like, or species or whatever they are. But then I'm like, so is Who Jesus a Who? Or was he from a different species? Like, is he human? I mean, I, I have so many questions. <coughs> Set this in the same continuity as Narnia. You know, Aslan is Jesus for that reality, mm -hmm. and who Jesus is, is Jesus for that reality. It's just, it's another alternate yeah. reality which has a Jesus for some reason. And like I kept saying, like I kept asking these questions, and you were like, they answer that in the Grinch movie. I'm like, yeah, well, not to my satisfaction. Yeah, because you're like, oh, what is, is the Grinch the same species as him? Well, why is he so angry? And I was like, but they did that in the film. I don't want to, no. Who taught film. him how to sew? He has a Singer sewing machine who taught him. I love the dog, though. The wee dog is the best part. Is that dog a who? No, the dog is a dog. We know that the dog is a dog. And why dog. does Cindy Lou Who have antennae? She has antennae coming out the top. But she, none a, of the other Who's have antennae. She's a mermaid. Yeah, she looks like she has no feet. Um, yeah. There's no ocean nearby, and yet she's a mermaid. That's... we have a lot of questions. But... Unfortunately, the guy who can ask them is dead. Yeah. But you're a lot, lot like the Grinch, because you hate Christmas. But the difference is, you don't try to, no, but you don't try to prevent other people from celebrating it. See, the Grinch would do well as a GOP congressperson. They're like, well, I hate this thing, so I'm going to prevent anyone else from doing it. You can't have any fun, no roast you'd have to be beast. A, you'd have to be a Grinch who hybrid, because you'd have to love Christmas and hate everything. Yeah, but this would be like, no, this would be like a thing that's not Christmas. Oh, it could be post uh, post end of the of the film Grinch, mm -hmm. when he's, his personality hasn't changed, but now he likes Christmas. Yeah, so he's decided that you know the Who shouldn't be able to have abortion, or gay marriage, but the uh, or freedom yeah. of Who religion. But yeah, I I apparently uh, should hate the should hate you know be like the Grinch because I do hate Christmas. You must stop Christmas from coming. Well, I just avoid it. It's You'll like, just smother me in the night, so I can't make you Christmas. Breakfast. I guess. I just, I, you know... If you haven't heard from me by Christmas Day, read the show. I let everyone else enjoy Christmas. It's like, it's your thing, you enjoy it, fine. I'll just keep away from it. I'm gonna make you a duck. You know Tesco sells, like, you know, like frozen like, turkeys and stuff like that? They also sell frozen duck and frozen goose. The unfortunate part is, logistically speaking, there's no way we could actually cook a goose in our oven because 
our freezer is so small, we'd have to buy it two days before it would defrost and it. But I'm gonna make you a duck. I'm gonna roast a duck. You like that? Try goose. I know. Well, well, okay. Well, fine. Then you can be cruise director on that. You can go down to Tesco. You can lug that thing up to Teddy the Minion's house to put it. They have a freezer that can hold a cow, literally. Put it there. You can get a taxi there and back to go pick it up. You know, 36 to, to 24 hours before we need to start defrosting it. You can move everything out of the refrigerator so we have to be the only thing in the refrigerator to defrost. These are the logistic issues. These are the nightmares. But... No. Okay, well, I'll make you duck anyway. Or I, or I could get you that, that chicken cake that we saw at Iceland. What was that called? I can't remember. But it's like this thing and it's like... I don't know what it is, it's like like there's stuffing in the middle and then there's like chicken all around it and then it's wrapped in bacon and tied in a way and it looks like a chicken cake and you bake it and that's your chicken cake. Yeah. Happy Christmas. I got you a chicken cake. I don't know why you're doing that. I don't know. So I'm having a stroke. <coughs> you're not having a stroke. So what was your favorite part? The end. Oh for Christ's sake, you said you liked Ooh. this one. You said you liked this one. I'm fine with it. I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. But I'm just being feeling contrary and probing against things right now. Probing against things. Yes. You should put that in your Twitter bio. <laughs> I am pro being against things. Wouldn't that make you anti things? No, I'm probing against things. I see. Actually, this one's kind of weird because like, it's like an iconic Christmas special, but it has like very little to do with Christmas except for it's about Christmas. Does that make any kind of sense? Like all the other ones would be like, let's retell the nativity story again. Let's retell a Christmas carol again. And don't worry, we're, we're getting to stuff like that. Oh God damn it. Let's elaborate <laughs> upon the night before Christmas again. But this is kind of, this is very interesting because it's very, not exotic, but it's very different. You know what I mean? Christmas is inherently magical and it has powers over things. And that's why the Grinch became good. I think what I am I am I am living proof that singing at people who don't like Christmas does not make them like Christmas. Well, here's the thing though. They said that day his heart grew three sizes that day. I don't think so. I think his brain grew three sizes that day. And he either he, way he learned, he, dead. he used abstract thinking. He learned critical thinking because the Grinch is very scientific. He's like, "Oh, I don't like Christmas." Here are the things that I see that happen around Christmas. They must be, they must have a causal relationship with Christmas. He does not understand, he thinks it's a causal relationship, not a correlational relationship. And even the way that he goes and he takes all their stuff is quite mechanical, it's quite scientific. I mean, it's very the idea of, if I remove these variables, I will not get the result that I don't want. If I remove these variables, these are, these are the, these are the, this is the multifactorial model that contributes to Christmas. If I remove these factors, these variables, Christmas will not happen. Well, a lot of Christmas didn't happen. All they got was the singing. Yeah, well, they, they started singing. Be they never, they never bothered uh, me. No, but they started singing, though, and that was the part that he hated the most. That was, that was the part that happened to you right after all the other stuff. So he had to reject the null hypothesis, in essence. He was like, well, empirically, I took Christmas away, yet they are still celebrating it. Christmas has still happened. Because he, he, he sees Christmas as this kind, he saw it as a cause and effect relationship not as something that's emotional. And because they were expressing the emotions of Christmas, then he was like, oh, Christmas, the empirical thing must have occurred. And that's when he had employed abstract thinking to be like, wait a second, maybe this result is divorced from all of these things. These things are just a part of it, but they're not the whole of it. It's, it's a, they're, they're, a correl they're correlational variables to the outcome. So he learned to not think about it scientifically, but to think about it emotionally, qualitatively. And he was like, well, maybe there's more to this than I was thinking. But the realization of, hey, maybe there was more to this than I was thinking, might have changed his, his you know, the way that he looks at, wait a second, if there's more to this, what have I been missing, you know? What have I not been considering? What other things of life have I discarded or, you know, disregarded and, and you know, stuff like that? It's a pretty, that's a pretty good theory. I like Manborg. Would you leave Manborg out of it? Right, Manborg is good. 
I think that's a very funny theory. If I thought of that, I'd probably end up doing Renegade Cunt about it. It makes huh? sense. It's it's logical. I, it, but still, it, it's, uh, singing at someone who likes Christmas doesn't actually work in the real life. They weren't singing at him. They were singing despite him. Not to spite him, despite him. Despite all that happened, they it's were still. It still wouldn't have. It still wouldn't have. Listen, this is a really good theory, and so if it's this video th gets shared on IO9, it, you're gonna have to really up the game, okay? You're gonna have to really like get excited about my theory. Share, tell IO9. They'll share it. Oh, that would be absolutely Science. wonderful. Given that I make every single renegade cunt with the uh, the feeling that you know. IO9 would, would put it would, would be all like, ooh, that's cool, let's put that up, or Cracked would rip it off. If it didn't and yet it's cunt. never happened. I think the problem is it has cunt in the title. If you're IO9 or Cracked, write the show. If, if, if your theory gets put up on IO9 and after I've done so many episodes running a cunt, you're desperately hoping that it happens. I well, I only. I'll I tell have... you what, Tony. Uh, my heart will grow three sizes smaller, and oh. I will end up having a heart attack. Well, don't worry about it, because I have under five hundred subscribers. My, I thought I made an AdSense account. I, mean, I had monetized videos. And now it's like you must make an AdSense account to monetize your videos. So I'm like, but I, but I have. I've earned revenue. Okay, I've earned like about under three dollars. But you know, and, and so now I actually have to create an AdSense account, which I thought that I'd already done. I could have sworn that I did, but. So that's singing at someone who doesn't like us doesn't make it better. Go Would out, it? go out and experiment, everybody, and then report your empirical results in the. All results in, even though they're not singing at him, basically. Do they? But here's the thing: in in the cartoon, we have no evidence that they actually are aware of the Grinch's existence. I know that in the movie you said that he came from their town or whatever, but like I have this idea that like like who the fuck is this guy? Oh, he found all of our Christmas. Oh, he, may, he must be a cool guy. Like, wouldn't it be really funny if he, <laughs> if he, if he thinks that they're, oh, they're just doing it to spite me, oh, those who's, but they really had no fucking clue that, like, 10,000 feet up the mountain in a cave lived this green guy and his dog. Like, they were just living their who lives. It'd be really funny, yes, if, if they decided that the, that the Grinch actually found their Christmas stuff and brought it back and got rid of the thief. Yeah. That would be the funniest thing ever. Oh, this guy is great. Let him carve the roast beast. And he's like... Oh, I, I, awkward. But still, the 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 Grinch, his heart growing three sizes, it still depends on this guy getting more of the thing that upsets him, and that suddenly making him like it. I, Christmas, disliking Christmas isn't like not well, liking the taste the thing, of beer. Here's the thing: it it's it's kind of like a reverse traumatic effect, because Christmas was the cat. Understanding Christmas was the catalyst for him to change his perception of the world, right? And whenever you realize something, when you have that aha moment, like when you figure out something with, in The Legend of Zelda, you don't have to fucking Google it. Whenever you have that moment, you know, of, of enlightenment, there's stuff happening in your brain. Neurotransmitters are zinging around, endorphins are happening. So that's why you feel like really good, like, oh, I figured this out, you know, I'm awesome, you know? So his perspective on life has changed. There's all these neurotransmitters, all these brain chemicals and endorphins are whizzing around in his brain. It feels good. And so he, I gesticulate when I talk. It's a thing my mom does it. Stop it. No, no, be nice. But here's the thing though. So he would associate, he might associate um, Christmas with this good feeling, regardless of the fact that it wasn't Christmas that made him feel that way. <laughs> it wasn't Christmas that made him feel that way. It was realizing that he, <laughs> stop it. Come on. It was realizing that he had a, had the wrong outlook on life. And now this change in perspective, he's like, oh, I love Christmas because he associates that unconsciously with those good feelings, with this realization, with this new lease. But does he have the wrong outlook on life? He just does not like this this event. The fact that he went and stole everything, yes. that's yes, wrong. He, yes, he does. That's because wrong. His, his disliking, he's like, oh, I dislike this event, but whatever to each their own. You know, versus I dislike this event, so I'm gonna fuck up everyone's yeah, yeah. shit. Yeah, actually, that going off the... and doing it is right. the problem. The fact that he doesn't like it is not the problem. No, the fact that he doesn't like it is not the problem. But I'm saying that his liking of Christmas m at the end might be just an incidental, um, an incidental result from the the entire brain chemical process and emotional process of changing your perspective and, and changing on how you look at life. This is more in depth than you expected, isn't it? Look, here's the thing. I just I just finished my my fifth term out of sixth in my psychology degree. I've got the two exams and I've got one more term. My dissertation is already written. 
it, just she's she's working on a paper on something. All right, well, I'm going to try to get it published. But, um, yeah, so you're going to get a lot more theoretical. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I legitimately don't like Christmas, so I'm like, i got to defend the position I'll just, of... I'll just make enough brain endorphins happen. I'll just make you good food, and like, and you'll, then you'll associate Christmas with good, good, with good food. Ha ha ha. No. <laughs> I won't. Okay. Well, I'll, 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 I will connect Christmas with what caused me to dislike it in the first place because that's what I do. Christmas crackers? Because they're they're not fun. <laughs> Christmas crackers are a thing they have over here. You're like, oh, I'll pull a Christmas cracker. It doesn't make an explosive noise. There's no smoke. There's no sparkles and confetti. It's just this thing. It rips open and then there's it used like to be sparkles and explosions. Oh, I guess the north, right? You can't have that anymore. Possibly, I don't know. And you know what's inside? A crepe paper hat. A joke. And a joke that is worse than a joke she would find on the bazooka bubblegum wrappers. And I'm like, there is... Sometimes a little, sometimes a little toy. <clears throat> yeah. But see, when I hear Cracker and Prize, I think Cracker Jack. Where, um, like, basically the prize is the fact that you have Cracker Jack and then you get so many... Oh, they used to get really good prizes in Cracker Jack boxes, but now it's just kind of like a little temporary tattoo or something bullshitty like that. Is, is the rip-off, is the off-brand version of that called Hunky Dave? No. Cracker Jack is nice. It's like caramel. It's like toffee peanuts and toffee popcorn. It's like moose munch, but there's no Please, chocolate. someone invent something called Honky Dave and sell it. Honky Dave and Cracker Jack. That'd be awesome. But anyway, so that's been the Christmasing Day 7. I've already picked what we're going to watch tomorrow. I won't, I'll, it, Stay tuned, like literally 10 seconds after we fade to black, and I'll tell you what's coming up next. Bye. But we're in the home stretch. We're over the halfway point. We're almost... We're almost to Christmas. Ah. I'm working Christmas Eve. We close at five, and I'm until six. Actually, lots of us are until six. Oh. And then we're gonna go to the pub. Uh, oh, by the way, we're going to the pub after. What? On Christmas Eve, I'm going to the pub with with some friends. When you said we, I was like, am I going? Oh no, we. I meant like the crew from work. Oh, that's. Fine. You don't have to come to the pub. Yeah. I'll stay here and edit because I've got to edit stuff. We're not going to be out while well, I... But you know what we're going to do for our special Christmas Eve dinner? Is Tesco has all the little, like, hors d'oeuvre things. Like, party lovely hors d'oeuvre things. For, like, I think it's, like, three for... Three. It was your idea! <laughs> and we're going to get, like, like we can get ribs and, like, little, little, little you know, wings and little mozzarella sticks. And little, like, shrimp toasts and just have an hors d'oeuvre dinner. Just like in the Bible. We love you all.